Well, hi everyone. I'm Andy Asher. I'm editor at Bloomer Boomer. Now, everyone's got problems, right? Now, lucky one out there who doesn't. So now and then, I like to dip into the world of, of emotional healing and therapy to see what's out there to help any of us who are working through difficult issues. So, um, today's guest is different from any I've ever heard about in the sense of how she works with her, uh, her patients. Uh, her name is Pilar Jennings, a PhD and a licensed psychoanalyst in New York. Now, her book is what I'm holding here, To Heal a Wounded Heart. And uh, it's uh, in her private practice, she focuses on applying Buddhist meditation with her uh, Western education from Columbia University. Now, interesting to say the least, we'll meet Pilar Jennings in just a moment and uh, about her book, uh, To Heal a Wounded Heart. But first, I just want to get a plug in for Bloomer Boomer, where it's constantly updated with news and ideas, and uh, we have some product reviews. Subscribers get big discounts on uh, products and services, and there's more, so you can t also subscribe to our YouTube. Okay. okay. Well, hi everyone, I'm Andy Asher and I am editor at Bloomer Boomer. Now, everyone's got problems, right? Well, lucky one out there who doesn't. So now and then I like to dip into the world of uh, emotional healing and therapy to see what's out there to help any of us who are working through difficult issues. So today's guest is different from any I I've ever heard about in the sense of how she works with her patients. She is Pilar Jennings. Now, Pilar is a PhD and a licensed psychoanalyst in New York. Her book, To Heal a Wounded Heart, in her private practice, she focuses on applying Buddhism meditation with her Western education from Columbia University. Now, interesting, uh, to say the least. Now, we're going to meet Pilar in just a moment and her book, To Heal a Wounded Heart. Now, first, I want to get a plug in for Bloomer Boomer. Dot com, where it's uh, constantly updated with news and ideas, and uh, we produce uh, reviews on products. Subscribers get big discounts on products and services, and there's more. Subscribe to YouTube, to our YouTube channel, and uh, we have a lively Facebook page, uh, live events around the country, and a lot of other really cool things. So check us out. We'll be right back with Pilar Jennings right after this. It's great having you here, and your new book, uh, to heal a wounded heart, it takes a kind of an unconventional path in therapy. You know, I want to hear more about that. Your book focuses on a case of a, a six-year-old girl. Now, how do you apply those lessons, for example, to those of us later in life, people facing retirement and the, some big decisions that go with uh, changing life's course? So the book is about my entry into the field of psychotherapy and what it was like for me to, to be a, a beginning therapist and to find my way into the work as I was reflecting on my, my own history. Um, but over time, uh, I found that most of my patients uh, are now in the second half of life, um, either in middle age or late adulthood. And it was so helpful for me to begin the, the process of being a therapist working with children because what I found is that regardless of our life stage, we are usually working through what we have experienced in early life and in some ways uh, are, are better equipped. To, to plumb the depths, to really understand what's happened to us as we have uh, yet more experiences of, of loss or trauma of any kind. Yeah, well, you know, uh, Bloomer Boomer has been around now for about five years, and it's about what I call the three E's, embrace age, empower dream, embrace life. Does that ring true to you? It does. I, I must say I thoroughly enjoy working with patients who are either middle-aged or, or in late adulthood. Um, for, for most of us, there's a little more capacity, often a lot more capacity, to really have a close look at, at who we are, what we've lived through, 
what we've struggled with, but just as importantly, what we have yet to live into or live into more fully. And therapy is, is not only a place to work through loss and trauma, but also a place to begin to claim untapped potential or, or talents or capacities that haven't been lived into as fully as one would like to. And why did you uh, go the route of psychotherapy and uh, maybe more remarkable, how you integrated Buddhism, Buddhism into your practice? Well, I think when I, when I was an adolescent and a young adult, I was very interested in therapy. For personal reasons, I, I found it to be quite helpful. Um, but as I was getting older, I was increasingly aware that suffering is really part of the human condition. That even for people who seem to have it all, right, the people who seem to have a loving family and good health and enough material resources, they too were going through at times experiences that felt like too much to handle. The older I got, the more I, I came to understand, uh, as one finds in Buddhist teaching, that suffering really is part of the life journey. Well, that's and, nice to uh, realize. I, I have never uh, looked at it that way, but uh, um, I think one can take a little comfort in, in that perspective. I think so too. It's, it's not uncommon for people to feel ashamed of their suffering or to feel that there's something wrong with them. They have some deficit from not being able to cope better. And one of the ways I, I try to bring my spiritual practice into my therapy practice is to remind people that we are all finding our way through suffering. We're just uniquely impacted by suffering. Well, in, 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 in connection to that, I'm wondering, is working with, uh, with patients uh, um, who you counsel and so forth, who are 50, 60, 70, for example, um, what, if anything, is distinctively different uh, than, say, any other age? There are a few things that I find to be different. Uh, with, with my older patients, with each new experience that's either very challenging or traumatizing, it inevitably awakens all prior losses or traumas. And this is part of what gives middle age and late adulthood its complexity, where we're reminded of anything we've been through earlier in life that, that might still have some element that we haven't worked out. And while that can be quite overwhelming, it just adds a lot of layers to a current difficulty. It can also be incredibly healing because wounds that never got fully healed finally have the chance to go through a healing process. Yeah, that's true. And, um, you know, I guess in one sense, that's why sometimes we feel like we take things a lot harder as we get older, but as you also point out, it gives us a chance to maybe address things that uh, uh, about us uh, as humans that we never had a chance to do. That's right, Andy, and we have resources that are much more developed later in life. Most of us um, have a, a slightly sturdier ego, and, and usually that means that we can tolerate hearing more from someone else, learning more about another perspective, considering another way of understanding what we're going through that's not entirely channel channeled through our own ego perspective. And it's, it's the rare younger person who's got enough self-esteem that they really can settle their, their mind, right, their point of view, and hear more in a genuine way from another. Yeah, and what did you find in, in Buddhism that was uh, so unique uh, that uh, the, say, Western training maybe lacked? There are a number of, of teachings and insights in Buddhism that I have found to be extremely helpful to me as a clinician. Uh, a primary one are the teachings on self-compassion. And as a therapist, this is really a gold mine because as I was saying a few moments ago, it's really common when people are going through something painful to, to have a lot of shame about that. 
And often there are these strong beliefs about oneself that just get stirred up when there when there's a painful experience. Yeah, and we having, were. Oh, go ahead. Having some way to to really tap into a genuine feeling of tenderness or affection for oneself when they're suffering can really just. Um, open up a space within within the mind and the heart to to heal. Yeah, and as uh, you and I had talked before, um, the issue of, of mindfulness uh, is is brought more into the equation, and I think that's such an an important learning experience to develop that uh, sense of mindfulness. Mindfulness is also extremely helpful, and and for for your listeners who are less familiar with it, it's basically the teaching on a non-judgmental or non-reactive awareness. And again, when, when we're trying to work out something that might, might stir up a lot of strong feelings or a lot of strong beliefs, having some way simply to notice those feelings, but without getting lost in them, just uh, usually allows people the time needed to learn more about what's happening, to learn more about what's needed in order to feel better. Yeah. And Pilar, if for someone who wants to practice healing, uh, you know, using your approach, um, how might they start on their own? Well, if, if they're wanting just to learn a little bit, they can certainly do some reading to, to read um, my new book, To Heal a Wounded Heart, or to listen uh, to podcasts. There are other Buddhist clinicians whom I like and respect a lot, people like Tara Brock and Jeffrey Rubin and Joe Itzo, um, just to have a sense of, of how we're bringing these different healing traditions together or to pursue work with a therapist who expresses real appreciation for, for spirituality in any faith tradition. You are fascinating. I want to thank you so much. It's a pleasure, Andy. Thanks for having me. Our guest is Pilar Jennings, a PhD and licensed psychoanalyst in New York who talks about the transformative power of Buddhism and psychotherapy and her new book, To Heal a Wounded Heart. We'll be right back. If you uh, liked the show and learned a thing or two, the full show is going to be available on YouTube and at Bloomer Boomer. Now, the audio version is going to be on Apple Podcasts. We have other shows coming up with really some amazing guests, so please like us on Facebook and visit us at BloomerBoomer.com. <laughs> Until next time, so long.